So the next to speak is Scott Yelogli, and besides being the CMO here at Aspital, he has also a vast experience of sport injuries, so it will be interesting to hear your view on how to get the player back. Thank you, Mats. I have uh, no disclosures that uh, are relevant. Nothing off-label will be discussed. Um, So return to play after cartilage repair. There's multiple factors, some of which we've heard about in the last several talks. Um, and you really have to individualize concern over your athlete or, or uh, patient, uh, age of the patient, the characteristics of the defect, uh, the concomitant pathology, level of sports participation, prior treatment, goals and expectation. Remember that cartilage repair is a physiologically slow process. And the durability of the repair depends on the quality of the repair tissue. Because it's one thing to get an athlete back to play, but that's for the season. You'd like them to play for the career, and that's really the challenge. Uh, rehabilitation is integral to the maturation of repair tissue and final outcome. And both over and under aggressive rehabilitation can compromise long-term results. Too much or too little can be just as bad. So if we look at, at the characteristics of cartilage defects, we really break them down into several different uh, factors based on size, location, concomitant pathology, whether it be malalignment or, uh, or whatever. But the problem with cartilage defects is they can progress in size based on edge wear, as you see in the top there in the red and blue arrows, that then allow the lesion to expand. There's a large distinction between two centimeter lesions and smaller and two to four or larger than four square centimeters. In, in my series of 1,000 defects for ACI, the average size was 5.63 square centimeters. So, so when we talk about two square centimeter lesions, those are small um, comparatively. Other patient characteristics that we want to individualize, the duration of symptoms, prior treatments, the age of the patient, the activity level, and the expectation and, uh, and goals. Concomitant knee pathology, tibiofemoral malalignment, patellofemoral maltracking, meniscal deficiency, and ligamentous deficiency are all things that need to be addressed, typically concomitant with uh, um, cartilage reconstruction. And these are all examples of cases of, of doing that. As far as rehabilitation, Mechanical overloading or underloading are detrimental, as I mentioned, uh, to cartilage restoration, as is compliance, actually doing what you're supposed to from a therapy standpoint. Um, avoidance of preventable complications, uh, uh, periosteum versus absorbable collagen membrane. The reoperation rate that was alluded to with ACI uh, has to do with the periosteal reattachment that then overgrows. Well, fortunately, we've learned that in, in over a decade, periosteum seldom used, and the reoperation rate went from 28% to less than 5% for ACI. So that's really not an issue anymore. Um, but we certainly, uh, another avoidable complication would be return to play prematurely. If we look at location of femoral condyles, all cartilage lesions are not the same. Femoral condyle lesions, ACI and Oates allografts do well over long term, even for large lesions. Um, uh, larger lesions than four square centimeters and even two to four do poorly long term even with microfracture. Small lesions, however, will do well with uh, marrow stimulation. Uh, and this is shown in multiple studies provided that concomitant uh, pathology is corrected. As we look at the repair process, if you look at the mesenchymal stem cells that are uh, eluded from the marrow in, a, in the process of um, uh, marrow stimulation, um, those can lead to several different tissue types, hyaline cartilage, fibrous cartilage, uh, or even hypertrophic cartilage, and, and the process that has been shown since Salter originally came up with the concept of CPM and um, things uh, such as that is hyaline cartilage starts forming at about eight weeks, but with the load that's presented to the joint, it turns to fibrocartilage, to fibrous tissue, and therefore affects its durability long term is the issue. Whereas ideally the cell repair from chondrocyte implantation 
chondrocytes can only grow up to be cartilage tissue. They can't grow up to be scar tissue. Now, there may be other cells that are introduced into the repair, obviously from the joint, from the fluid, um, that can happen, and those uh, certainly can affect results. But theoretically, um, since I know we have some uh, non-surgeons here, just real quick, this is marrow stimulation. So a combination of these ice pick type tools literally fracture the bone, fracture the subchondral bone, and the idea of doing it as a puncture, it allows little stellate lines to increase the surface area for the marrow blood to clot and form and set up a clot, and that's the whole principle of it. But by the same token, the name marrow fracture, I mean, think if we called it bone breaking. Patients probably wouldn't go for that very well. But, but it is a fracture that the body recovers to, and up to 30% of the time, it makes intralesional osteophytes, which as you see in this lower picture right here, that's a bone that's growing inside the joint in the surface, and that certainly is problematic and leads to some of the um, um, continued symptoms after this uh, treatment method. Osteochondral autograph transfers, um, and this really is confined to about two, uh, up to eight or 10 millimeter lesions um, is generally practiced. Mosaic plasty, uh, as, as Chow reports, is a, is a more extensive and a more demanding procedure and is done uh, um, uh, less often and certainly less often uh, in the United States. Um, but certainly gives reliable uh, uh, results for appropriately sized defects. ACI is a, is a two-stage procedure. When a lesion is identified, a biopsy is obtained, the biopsy is then cultured and grown, and one comes back and puts the cells under, uh, in the 90s, we, we did it under periosteum, and now we put it under an absorbable type 1, type 3 collagen membrane um, that uh, is sewn in place, the cells are injected, and, uh, uh, and then the tissue goes on to repair by a fairly slow process. Uh, and then one final, um, final technique is osteochondral allografts. So here, the entire area is basically tapped out and then replaced with osteoarticular graft from a cadaver, uh, bone and cartilage. So you're putting in established tissue, and so when you're done, as you see in the lower right picture, you've got a whole new cartilage surface. All you need to do is heal the bone. Um, and although it's a little bit slower from its al an allograph, it, it, they do uh, quite well, and the long-term viability of a tissue is, uh, is pretty remarkable. So as we look at, at these options that, uh, that we've heard about in the last several talks, they're palliative, they're reparative, substitutive, and regenerative, and that's really what it is. And as you go down these, the complexity of these treatments, the time to return to play increases. From a rehabilitation standpoint, we just certainly heard uh, uh, Barbara present uh, a comprehensive program to the, to the, the principles of cartilage rehabilitation. Um, I would just say that it's, it's still, even though we have guidelines, it still ends up best individualized per patient um, to decide uh, uh, when they advance to the next stage to allow the optical or the optimal loading of the cartilage, which is so necessary for, uh, for repair. Now, the, the thing that uh, she also talked about, proliferation, transition, um, remodeling, and maturation, here just happens to be a patient that I was able to have arthroscopy at each of these different stages and can kind of show what the repair process is. So from the full thickness defect under pre-op, at five months, the tissue was soft, kind of like uh, a hard tapioca. Uh, but certainly filled in, and then by one year it was completely smooth, had a little bit of softness compared to the surrounding cartilage, but again was integrated into the, uh, into the bone, and then at three years when we had, um, when I actually was doing a shoulder on the patient, he said, let's look inside the knee, and we looked inside the knee, and certainly now it's firm, it's firm compared to the surrounding tissue, and that, uh, and that result is now over 10 years and has continued to... Uh, to do well. So now if we look at the timeline for return to play, again we see that um, increasing complexity is up at the top. That means more patient involvement, more difficult for the surgeon. The easiest options are on the bottom, chondroplasty, microfracture, 
and then Oates autographed, Oates allographed, and see how the time changes to return. It can vary from the four to six month range, even less than that for chondroplasty, four to six months for um, uh, microfracture and Oates uh, autographed, and then go up to as 12 and 18 months for, um, uh, for ACI. However, the cellular repairs, ACI, Oates allografts, they give the best durability. So you want to just get a, a quick bang for your buck, return for a season or two, microfracture will be fine for the average size defect, but from a longevity standpoint, um, the durability is what we really need. Here's just a, a brief comparison of some of the rehabilitation guidelines from a weight-bearing standpoint and, uh, and also what the um, importance of return to impact is, and I think Barbara has gone over that nicely. Um, just a, something that's counterintuitive, uh, we think that the big advance in, in sports medicine is that we do everything faster and quicker, we get people back. Uh, here uh, just is a, a study that showed if you return to impact loading prior to 12 months um, for these uh, patients treated with matrix ACI, um, which is basically the cells floating in a, in a, a hyaluronic membrane, that the results were poorer than those who returned after 12 months. So despite the patient maybe seeming to be ready, uh, here's a case where to go even slower gave best results at two years. So it's a, the important uh, principle of uh, Scott Dye's uh, um, envelope of function. There's a sort of a narrow range that, uh, that people can function at, and that's true for cartilage. If you overload it or you underload it, it's suboptimal, the tissue doesn't develop. If you overload it, the tissue breaks down. There's a breakdown of the products and it doesn't go on to mature like it should. So as far as return to play itself guidelines, there are no consistent uh, guidelines for return to play as, as Barbara has alluded. And I, like, uh, like she, have, have gone to just really evidence that we have from ACL reconstructions and, and look for the single, uh, single leg hop test, quadriceps hamstring indexes, and then be a little bit more careful on the return to field with, um, uh, with self agility, full speed, and then going on to unopposed practice, uh, opposed practice drills, and then uh, full scrimmage uh, prior to return to, uh, to play. So as we look at various studies, and I've gone through some of the ones that have been presented already and really highlighted the key points so chondroplasty is basically just cleaning up the joint. That's all that is. And that's really the most common thing that I use in the National Football League because it doesn't really, doesn't really cause any more damage to the patient. And with the prolonged rehabilitation period that an off-season gives, have a, have a pretty high consistent level of returning to uh, sport. But what this study found was that there was a 4.4 times um, less likely to return to play in the National Football League with, uh, with microfracture. Another study of Oates autographed by Gudis. This is a very, very nice study in that there's two different points here to this study. One is at, um, um, at about uh, two or three years, and one is at almost 10 years of follow-up. So in the short term, microfracture and ACI, or microfracture and Oates autographed 93% return to sport in oats, 52% with microfracture. But then if we look at 10 years later, so at 10 years, 75% of oats were still functioning in sport, but only 37% of the microfracture were still uh, functioning in sport. So that's that durability issue that, uh, that I talked about. Um, Kai Midhofer um, in a, uh, uh, another microfracture study shows that after initial improvement, the scores deteriorate at 18, 24, 36 months, and, and uh, so the results go downhill, and now only 47% of athletes were uh, uh, able to return to, uh, um, to continued sports. Um, Oates allograft, a more difficult thing. Um, uh, this study in 2013 by um, Shaha, 42% of active duty Army um, soldiers were unable to stay on re return to duty, and only 5.3% return to their prior level of, uh, of function. Uh, another study by Kirsten in 2012 um, showed that 75% of recreational athletes, but only 23% of collegiate athletes 
uh, were able to return to sport at the uh, prior level of, uh, of function. Um, <clears throat> and then looking at, uh, at soccer in general or, or football in 2005, again, looking at 50 patients, and this was uh, from multiple uh, uh, centers, um, found that the most, it was most successful in younger patients with less than one year of symptoms. And of those uh, uh, that returned to play, 87% maintained their return to play uh, four years later. Um, and then in another study um, that uh, with an average size of 6.4 square centimeters, so larger, larger lesions, uh, found that with ACI, um, that all that had symptoms less than one year uh, returned, um, but only 33% of this is adolescent uh, athletes were able to return if they had symptoms for more than one year. Chronic, more difficult to treat, more difficult uh, lesions inside the knee, more difficult biologic uh, uh, process inside the knee. And then finally, a study with Macy, that's third generation ACI, that's what I mentioned in the matrix that occurs, um, and they found 74% uh, uh, return to play. Um, in a, in a, um, a combined meta-analysis um, from 2009, uh, the highest rate of return to play was Oates autographs. That's those one or two plugs that are taken from the person, from the lateral femoral condyle, uh, and put in. But the best longevity of these um, uh, studies that uh, were viewed, 20 different studies, was ACI, the longest that are going to continue to, to, uh, to function in sport. And then in a more recent study from 2015, uh, of which included about 1,000 patients, found that Oates autograft and ACI had statistically greater rates of return than microfracture, and that microfracture was the least likely to return to play. So again, the comment I made before concerns over microfracture as a, as a solution, and it's, it's why we need to continue to, uh, to search and research for better uh, options for, uh, for our athletes. Um, so, in sort of summation, predictors of outcome, smaller defects, less than two square centimeters, most ideal with younger athletes, um, they have a higher level of skill, they can compensate for things, a duration of symptoms less than a year, uh, they have faster return to play with microfracture, Oates autographs, but this is only for smaller lesions. The durability is shortest with microfracture, it's better with Oates autographed. We have results up to 10 years. Um, and don't do microfracture just because it's easy on larger lesions because those outcomes are worse and it does burn bridges for other options. If you have to come back and do an ACI on top of a, a failed microfracture, the results uh, have 33% higher failure rate uh, for the second time around. So, Oats, uh, or I mean microfracture on large lesions, there are numerous studies that show it has dismal results even up front, and you would actually be doing your athlete a disservice. Microfracture is reserved for the smaller lesion uh, period and shouldn't be used otherwise. So in the larger defects, greater than four square centimeters, that's the biggest challenge. Um, and again, they're best in younger athletes, best in, in players that uh, have had symptoms for less than a year. And for ACI, there's no influence of the size uh, on the clinical outcome or the return to play. ACI has the best durability and longevity, but the slowest return to play, 12 to 18 months. Professional soccer players still performing at the same level at 52 months, 87% that return to play still were performing at the highest level. Larger lesions do better with ACI or Oates allograft. Yeah, here's just a case of a trochlea lesion. Uh, at, uh, at two years after ACI. So in summary, uh, longer term preoperative symptoms creates an adverse intraarticular environment. There's diminished results no matter what method you have. Return to play after cartilage treatment is feasible in the majority of cases, majority 50%, so anything over that uh, is, is certainly what we can do. Cartilage lesions requiring treatment do shorten high level athletic careers. Once you've had that injury, once you've had treatment, the likelihood that you're going to go on to have the same level of, of career has been greatly reduced. And durability and progression to DJD remains the major challenge in uh, articular cartilage lesions. Thank you.